Hello, I'm Gus Downing, publisher and editor of the D&D Daily, and this is the LP News Network. Today's episode is with the Loss Prevention Research Council. As LPs research base, practice, and brain trust, the LPRC studies virtually every aspect of loss prevention, from strategy, technology, analytics, the various forms of theft, fraud, robbery, to store and parking lot violence and even deaths. The LPRC delivers actionable information that drives results. Today we're going to be discussing where we're going as an industry, how we're going to get there, and how your team can fully engage. With us today to discuss these topics is Dr. Reed Hayes, Director of Loss Prevention Research Council and the University of Florida, Chad McIntosh, VP of Loss Prevention and Risk Management from Bloomingdale's, and Tom Meehan, Manager Data Systems and Central Investigations at Bloomingdale's. Reed, Chad, Tom, thanks for being here today. Thank you, Gus. Reed, let's start out with talking about protecting the future retail enterprise. Where is multi-channel leading us? Well, you know, fortunately, we're sort of seeing where multi-channel is going, it looks like. Um, and in fact, we just took a tour or a group out to uh, Seattle, Washington, met with Microsoft to look at retail of the future, where they've got futurists looking at what's going to look like, and also spent some quality time another day with Amazon and looking at how they're distributing from rickshaws in China to every single channel you can imagine um, to lockers here in New York City, mm -hmm. where you come and pick it up like a UPS store. Um, so I think that's what we're talking about is not only sourcing like we've been doing uh, merchandise, but the distribution of that merchandise is amazing. Mm -hmm. But how do, you, how do you look at refunds and returns and everything else? So uh, we've got a working group, um, and actually it turns out that uh, we've got it, the chair of the working group here with Tom, mm -hmm. and uh, they're working on that very issue right now. Mm -hmm. Chad, your opinion? Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's interesting because there are no experts in omni-channel retail today. Mm -hmm. We're all learning it as we go. And that, that includes the senior executives. Too, that I includes the senior executives, <laughs> yeah, myself included. So I think it's interesting. I think it's, it's, it's really having us think differently about asset protection or loss prevention today in that those traditional methods that we used in the past will serve us, but it won't serve us as well as they have in the past. So you have to think differently. You have to think bigger about uh, approaching and ch the challenge and solving the problem. Tom? Yeah, I, I think second what Chad and Reed said is uh, as we evolve, the business is evolving quicker than it ever has before. So in the past, uh, it was less of a cat and mouse game. Today, we're really, uh, for lack of better words, chasing it. So it's how do we use technology uh, more efficiently, and then how do we take all the different data points from the business that are non-traditional and help them make us make better decisions? You know, let's get into some of the hot topics. I mean, getting your LP and AP program ready for the challenges of omni-channeling retail. I mean, how do you do that, Reed? Well, I mean, I think the first place is your people, and, uh, you know, Chad and I have been around a while, Tom as well, but um, getting the people that think differently, uh, I think, is the first place to start. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, Chad pointed out, I mean, there are really no experts, so what we've got to do is adjust. So looking at the people, but I think the other thing is having a template. And one thing we've been working a lot on the LPRC is a template. It doesn't matter what the issue is or where the issue is taking place. Mm -hmm. If you've got a framework to work in, I think that gives you a huge, huge head start. Mm -hmm. Chad? Yeah, I think, I, think uh, I, I try and impart a message to our asset protection managers at Bloomingdale's, and I use the story of Blockbuster. They all know what Blockbuster was, but Blockbuster's gone because they didn't want to kind of change their thinking in the process or change their culture. So we have to be flexible and open to, to change. And I think it's, it's a matter of putting them in position, taking a look at technology today. What's the real value of technology? The only way to do that is to do a scientific approach to it. And that's where we leverage LPRC in that process. Tom? Yeah, in addition to that, the LPRC is a great learning environment. So while we all, there's no singular expert, putting all of our heads together and being able to talk in an open environment really helps us get to that next level. In addition to problem, uh, solving real life problems uh, and using science versus emotion. Mm -hmm. How does cybercrime play into this, this new omni world and, and how does it affect the LP executive of the future? I mean, it really, when we, when we kind of talk that way, everybody kind of thinks IT security, you know, they'll take care of it, you know. But from an investigative standpoint, they all end up on our desk, on the LP's desk. I mean, how does that impact it? Well, you know, we talked to a chain the other day where 
the same group was hitting and conducting fraud in the stores, uh, when they found the loopholes and shut it down, they immediately switched to cyber. So it turns out that it wasn't just an IT issue. In fact, it started as a store, but it was the same crew mm -hmm. that was doing it. They just had somebody on their team that said, hey, I know how to attack this way. Yeah. So I think that's part of it is, again, that's where if you have the framework and the people that can adjust and adapt, you're probably going to be better off. Chad, with the yeah, cyber yeah, I think it's it's a matter of an LP or AP program today is impacted by cybercrime. They may not be leading the charge for their organization, but the fraud is going to come to their desk. So being able to prepare and have an action strategy to impact that performance in your store is critical today. Well, I think this is a, a, a huge topic because although we don't directly own it in a lot of cases, uh, everything we do is affected by it. So we're going to be the frontline people that are responding to an event. Uh, yet more now than ever, you have to know what your IT's department's plan is so that you know what your role is. And then the gap is getting smaller and smaller between traditional ORC and cybercrime. You know, when you talk about every breach and everything, it circles right back to the stores. There's more people using sold in credit cards. There's more information out there. And as a, you know, criminals get more sophisticated, it, the, the, it'll, the gap will almost dissipate. It'll be one and the same. I mean, the word omni, I looked it up in the dictionary a year ago, and it was like, okay, what is this? And it merely means all. It means all. In, in, in my definition of it, it means every touch point that a customer or a criminal can have in your store, whether it's cybercrime, fraud, ORC, whatever it is, I mean, it's all encompassing. Which means to me that the LP executive has to be an omni LP person or, or executive from a standpoint of looking at it from every aspect of the criminal element or criminal ability that they possibly can. Which kind of crosses over into the IT security world, it crosses over into marketing, it crosses over into operations. It creates an omni LP type of approach for it. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. I, th I think Tom made a great point in that uh, understanding what your role is in cybercrime in your organizations critical. You may not, as I said, you may not be leading that charge, but you're going to have a role in the process. So be prepared, educate your teams in, in the field so that they understand what their role is in the store as well. But it is, it, it, it crosses many barriers, many different uh, uh, business types that you have to be prepared and understand what's going on in all of them today. And you've really got to be ready to be the investigator for the IT security department and, and really service them and help them, correct? I mean, you, therefore, you kind of have to be ambidextrous and, and be able to handle all the different aspects. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So now, the next issue would be the leaner LP departments. I mean, everybody's cutting back since 08. It has been a trend. You know, certainly, although we did see last year the number of lower level positions, the LPM levels of store detectives increase, which is evidenced by all the increased job you know, postings for such positions last year, but the middle and higher level decreased significantly. I mean, how do we continue to deliver the service you know, that we need to deliver with these leaner LP programs? Reed? Well, I mean, one example is, uh at Toys R Us where the VP of Asset Protection was asked to take on customer service and call centers. And so they're, you know, they're saying, look, we're going to leverage leadership and execution skills um, and regardless of what it is. And so you better be able to lead and you better be able to execute regardless of the, I guess, that particular former pipeline that you had before. So that's probably one way. Yeah, I, th I think it's, uh, it's a couple of different approaches. One, you're right, uh, everybody's leaner. So it's, it's utilizing technology to make the job simpler in the process. And again, we come back to our relationship with LPRC and really understand where we're making our investments. What's the ORI, ORI like for us? And that uh, are we putting the right tools in place to impact it? And then it's using Tom and Tom's team to really develop risk models so we know where to plug in the technology. We know where to put our resources so that we have them positioned correctly to impact profit in our stores. So using the LPRC then, as your guinea pig, so to speak, the testing arm, the, the researchers of the systems and the programs and such, to test them and go back to the industry and say, this is what works, this is what doesn't. Yeah, and we have three things. I mean, really what they're touching on is uh, precision, and, I, and they want to be much more precise of what they do. It's going to make you more effective. And then the idea is the three terms, the same thing in, uh, let's say, treating cancer, and that's going to be selective, and it's going to be effective, and it's going to be long-term. So whatever 
fix that you come up with or treatment, it needs to be that precise or that selection. It needs to be highly impactful, of course, with a good ROI, like Chad just said. And it's got to be a longer term because you're, you're kind of hitting the, what's causing the problem, not just banging on the solutions. Tom, your comments about the leaner LP department? I think it, it, you know it's understanding that technology doesn't replace people; it makes people's jobs easier. And then the thing that uh, we constantly say, and I think you heard Chad and I say it, is you have to think bigger. Uh, the old school mentality of hiring a loss prevention person in the store that specializes only in loss prevention really doesn't work anymore. You know, we have to have folks that are on our teams that are business partners and business managers that have expertise or specialize in asset protection, but they really need to be have a whole approach and be as well-rounded as possible. Reed, can you tell us a little bit about your future store? You had mentioned that when I one of my conversations and that Tom was actually helping to manage some of that process. Could you talk to that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, you know, traditionally uh, most of our retailer members, about 45 chains, had a store in Gainesville or at least something within maybe two hours of our team uh, to use as an innovation location. Maybe their primary or maybe part of their network of what they're working on. Um, we now have a lab in Innovation Square on University of Florida campus. But in this case, what we're talking about is, all right, how do we bring together new technologies, uh, hook them up together, and give us better sensors? We want to know what's going on in different zones, uh, and we want to be able to do something about it more quickly, real-time, situational awareness. So that's what's going on. And Tom, of course, knows a lot more about what he's doing up here in New York, but we're kind of joking, saying this is LPRC Innovation Lab North. Okay. Tom, care to comment about yeah, that? Yeah, so I mean, we're just really taking, again, that scientific approach to trying a whole bunch of different things. And one of the things that we're really focused on is non traditional LP. Uh, applications, so business applications that we can take data from and make business decisions that also impact shortage uh, in the long haul. So uh, we're at the point now where you know there's the traditional we have RFID, we have some video analytics, but things that you would normally say, well, those aren't asset protection uh, programs. Well, we're taking the approach that of course they are; they're business programs, and we can take that information and learn from it. And what we're hoping to get, and it's still in the earlier stages, but we're seeing some great success already, is. A, a, a place where we can identify what might happen based on the data. So taking all of those data points that we would take for granted before and being able to hey, uh, make better business decision, decisions. And Reed mentioned before precision, it's really about efficiency. Again, you went back to that lean point of how can we take all that information that we already have in our stores that we didn't believe was ours when it's the businesses and make better decisions. Mm -hmm. well, Chad, Tom, Reed, I, I want to thank you for being here today. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks Gus. Well, that's it for this episode, ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to thank you for watching. And until next time, let's keep them all safe out there. Mm -hmm.